we start by praising Allah and we seek His forgiveness and His aid and we seek refuge in Him from the evil of ourselves and from the evil of our bad action whomsoever Allah guides then truly none can misguide them and whomsoever Allah allows to misguide surely none can guide them and I bear witness and I testify that there is no true God worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his last and final messenger and indeed the very best of speech is the speech of Allah and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the most evil of all affairs are the newly invented matters in this religion and every newly invented matter in this religion is a misguidance and an innovation and every misguidance leads to the hellfire Ayyuhal Mu'minun O believing brothers and sisters we are now in the month of Dhul Hijjah we are in the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah and Dhul Hijjah is a season from the different seasons of worship that brings blessings, benefits and opportunities for us to correct and improve our faith it gives us the opportunity to make up for the shortcomings that we may fall into for the mistakes that we may make and it's one of those times where we can turn to Allah with ibadat, with worship, with ta'at, with obedience and it is one of the times we can become closer to Allah and truly the fortunate person because so many of us we enter these 10 days of the Hijjah as if it was any other days and we do not make the most of this and we do not change anything in our the way we worship in our daily habits and really the fortunate one is the one who takes advantage of this month takes advantage of these days and increases in his worship and the first 10 days of the Hijjah they are blessed for both the pilgrims and the non-pilgrims both those who are going to Hajj and those who remain it's not something specifically for the people who go to Hajj it's for all of the Muslims and Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah the great scholar he said regarding the first 10 days of the Hijjah that indeed its days are the most excellent of all of the days with Allah and it has been confirmed in Sahih al-Bukhari from Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said no deeds are more virtuous than the deeds that are done in these days meaning the 10 days of the Hijjah and the companions radiallahu anhum they asked him even jihad ya Rasulullah even fighting in the cause of Allah and he replied not even jihad except for the one the very few individual who goes out only for the sake of Allah and he loses everything and it is these 10 days again showing us the importance of the 10 days that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself swears in the Quran when he says well fajr well yalin asha by the dawn and by the 10 nights and the scholars have said that these 10 nights they are the nights of the hijjah which we are in now and then we move on to the main topic of Yawm Arafah which is the ninth day of the Hijjah it is the day when the pilgrims those who are making Hajj they gather on the mountain plain of Arafah praying and supplicating to their Lord the day of Arafah holds great importance in Islam since this is the day when Allah completed his revelation on the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as was reported in the Sahihain in Al-Bukhari Muslim that a Jewish man came to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu and he said to him O Amir al-Mu'maneen, O leader, O Amir of the believers there is a verse in the Quran which if it was revealed to us the Jews we would have taken this day as an Eid and Umar radiallahu anhu he said to them to the man which verse is this and the Jewish man said the verse Al-Yawma Akmaltu Lakum Deenakum Wa Atmantu Alaykum Ni'mati that this day I have perfected for you your religion and completed my favor upon you and have chosen Islam as your religion, your deed, your way of life and Umar radiallahu anhu said to him, replied to the Jewish man we know 
exactly on which day and which place this verse was revealed to the Prophet and he said it was the day that he was standing in Arafah and it was Yawm al Jum'ah, it was a Friday. Arafah is also the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the covenant, took the testimony from the offspring, from the progeny of Adam alayhi salam. It was reported by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu that the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when Allah created Adam alayhi salam, Allah took testimony from him, a covenant from him in a place called Na'man on the day of Arafah. Then he extracted from him his descendants, from his back, all his descendants, all his offspring came out, all of mankind came out from him who would be born until the end of the world, generation after generation. And he spread them out in front of him. Allah spread them out in front of him, Allah, in order to take this testimony, to take this covenant from them too. And he spoke to them face to face, saying, Alastu bi rabbikum, am I not your Lord? And they all replied, Bella, yes, Nishhad, we testify to it. Allah then explained why he had Allah well, explained to us why he took all of mankind out in front of him to bear witness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this was in case that you mankind should say on the day of resurrection, surely Lord we were unaware of this. We had no idea that Allah, you are Lord and that we should worship you only alone. So because of this, Allah made all of Bani Adam, all of the descendants of Adam alayhi salam testify that, that, that he is their Lord. And we know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said that every mawlud, yulud al fitrah, that every newborn child is born upon fitrah, this natural inclination. So this is something that Allah did also on the day of Yom Arafah. And Arafah is a day of forgiveness from sins. Freedom for the hellfire, for the people who are present in the plain of Arafah. Aisha radiallahu anha narrated the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying there is no day there is no day on which Allah frees more people from the fire than the day of Arafah he comes close and expresses his pride to the angels saying what do these people the hajis what do they want and this hadith mentions forgiveness for the pilgrims in addition to this fasting psalm on the day of Arafah is a sunnah and an expiation for the people who did not go to Hajj. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to fast on the 9th of the Hijjah, on the day of Ashura, on the three days of each month, and on the first two Mondays and Thursdays of each month. And it was reported in Sahih Muslim that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked about the fasting on the day of Arafah. And he replied, مَنْ سَامَ يَوْمَ عَرَفَةً غُفِّرَ لَهُ سَنَةٍ أَمَانُهُ وَسَنَةٍ قَبْلُهُ that whoever fasts the day of Arafah, it expiates, it wipes out, it cancels a year's sin, a year before and a year after, just by fasting this one day. And how many of us, we don't make the effort. We say, it's a sunnah. It's only a sunnah. It's not wajib like Ramadan. Imagine you can fast just one day. How much sacrifice does that take? And your, all of your sins for the previous year and the year to come will be forgiven. And it's worth mentioning here that the fasting is only mustahab, only recommended for the people who are resident and not for the pilgrims because there is nothing from the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam where any of him or the companions would fast when they were on the pilgrimage. O oh, brothers and sisters, after this day of Arafah, we come to Yawm al Naha, the day of sacrifice, the tenth of the Hijjah, the greatest day of Hajj. And it is known as Yom al nahar because it marks the major rite of the Hajj, the sacrifice. And it was recorded by Imam Ahmed that the day of al nahar is the most virtuous day to Allah. And the greatest day of al Hajj is the day of al nahar the day of slaughtering. And Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said that the most excellent day of the week is the day of Jum'ah, the day of Friday. And the most excellent day of the year is the day of al nahar the day of the sacrifice. And the day, this day of al nahar is known for most of us as Eid al-Adha, meaning the festival or the celebration of sacrifice. 
It is one of the two festivals which Allah granted us, the believers. And the Prophet said, referring to the days of Jahiliyyah, when they used to have two celebrations, he said, I came to you, and you had in Jahiliyyah, the days before Islam, two days of play and amusement. And Allah has replaced something better for you. It is the day of an naha the day of sacrifice, and the day of fitr, the day of Eid al-Fitr. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that the day of al-Fitr, and the day of an naha and the days of Tashriq, which are the three days after Eid, that they are the days, they are our Eid, and they are the days of eating and drinking. And during these days, 